swapped, buried in the wrong grave. Two families are demanding their loved ones exhumed after 41 Action News investigator Jessica McMaster reveals a huge mix-up at the mortuary. Just imagine visiting your wife, sister, or mother at the cemetery, only to find out a year later that someone else, a complete stranger, is buried in their grave. She was just a happy-go-lucky girl, you know. Just as in life, Deborah Lemon is surrounded by loved ones buried next to them under this old maple tree in Hickory Grove Cemetery. Or at least she's supposed to be. Somebody needs to be held accountable. On Thursday, Deborah's husband Jack, her sister-in-law, and investigators watched as crews began exhuming her casket. It's the result of a 41 Action News investigation that uncovered a possible mix-up at the Springfield mortuary involving three bodies, including Deborah's. Every day I think about it. A former mortuary employee tells us it happened in July of last year. Catherine Rummerfield, Celia Atchison, and Deborah, she says, are all in the wrong graves. In August, we met with Catherine's daughter, Linda Schwanz, to tell her what we learned. If my mother is not in this grave, where is she? The whistleblower tells us that Catherine is buried about 30 miles away in Deborah's grave. Deborah Lemon has been cremated as Celia Atchison. Celia Atchison is in Catherine Rummerfield's grave, and Catherine Rummerfield is in Deborah Lemon's grave. The former employee only filed a complaint with the State Board of Embalmers and Funeral Directors, so we contacted the Springfield Police Department, and so did Schwanz, who requested the exhumation. It's the idea that I come here all the time to visit her grave, and if it's somebody else in her grave, I mean, that's heart-wrenching to say the very least. The former employee tells us that on the day of the mix-up, Barnes Family Funeral Home in Ozark came for Swan's mother but couldn't find her at the mortuary. So they took Celia instead after comparing her body to a picture of Catherine. So where was Catherine? We start unzipping body bags, checking toe tags, and going from there. After watching surveillance video, the former employee says a different funeral home had come on or before that day and taken Catherine instead of Deborah. With Deborah still at the mortuary, the whistleblower says her boss, Brian Simmons, who you see here at the exhumation, made a shocking request. He had instructed us to cremate Deborah Lemon with Celia Atchison's paperwork. Jack Lemon says if what the former employee is saying is true, it goes against his wife's dying wish. She was against cremation, you know. 100%. She, I don't want to be cremated. 41 Action News investigators pulled the obituaries for the women and found they all three died within just two days of each other, which means they could have easily all been in the mortuary on the same day. Deborah's sister-in-law, Joanita Long, says it was the perfect mishap to cover up. Celia and Deborah both wanted direct burials. And that's the way Linda's mom had ironically asked to have it done, too. No viewing. <laughs> no one to catch the switch. We placed calls to Simmons at Springfield Mortuary and Randy Barnes of Barnes Funeral Home prior to the exhumation. While we got both of them on the phone, neither one wanted to comment. But Schwantz tells us Barnes called her saying he wanted to make it right and to pay for the exhumation. One day before the digging began, Long says she also got a call. This one from Simmons. He said that he was afraid they had cremated Deborah by mistake. But she says, make no mistake about it. This was intentional. And now that he knows that they're going to find out with the DNA testing, he knows he's going to be found out. So why not try to smooth it over? Simmons and Barnes, who again didn't have anything to say on the day of the exhumation, watched as Deborah's casket was pulled from the ground. The families lean on each other as they wait for answers. It's just another body. It's just another number. You know, they have no connection. But still, when you're in that position, professionally, you should think of the families and how, how you would feel if it was your loved one. It's like we're back to square one, burying them again, going through the process of grieving. Following the exhumation of what was supposed to be Deborah Lemon's body, family did identify that body as Catherine Rummerfield. However, we won't know anything for sure until that DNA comes back in about two weeks. Near Springfield, I'm investigator Jessica McMaster, 41 Action News.
And police are also not commenting on the investigation until those DNA test results come back in again about two weeks. New details tonight on a mortuary mix-up in Springfield, Missouri. Today, DNA tests confirm one of the three bodies swapped was placed in the wrong grave. 41 Action News investigator Jessica McMaster shows us who the mortuary owner now blames for the gravesite gaffes. Catherine Rummerfield's daughter, Linda Schwanz, contacted me earlier today saying she's received confirmation from the lab that the DNA testing confirms her mother was buried in the wrong grave. Schwan says she buried her mother in Rivermont Memorial Gardens last year. But two months ago, the 41 Action News investigators learned from a former employee of Springfield Mortuary that three bodies had been swapped and sent out to the wrong funeral homes for burial. That included Rummerfield, Celia Atchison, and Deborah Lemon. We took that information to Schwantz last month. She contacted the police and later got a call from the owner of Barnes Funeral Home, who was supposed to have buried her mother, saying that he'd pay for the exhumation, which happened last Thursday, along with the DNA testing. Now to another update for you. The family of Deborah Lemon received her ashes this morning. Lemon, family says, did not want to be cremated. But the whistleblower tells us this was all part of the cover up. Also today, the owner of Springfield Mortuary, Brian Simmons, issued a statement. The first paragraph blames former employees for the mix up. He writes, the staff that apparently allowed these errors to occur under their watch are no longer employed by us. However, Simmons doesn't say if they were fired as a direct result. He says the mortuary contacted the funeral homes once it learned of the errors, although the statement doesn't address when that was. Still, the families say they weren't informed of anything until the 41 Action News investigators got involved last month. We reached out to the Springfield Police Department's public affairs officer, Lisa Cox. She tells us the department still hasn't received that DNA confirmation that until they do, they can't confirm that any mistakes or criminal activity have taken place. I'm investigator Jessica McMaster, 41 Action News. And if you happen to miss our full investigation on this that aired last night on Mortuary Mix-Up, it's on our 41 Action News app. You can download it now.